Hey everyone, welcome to Lucas and Martin's Guitar Corner. I'm Martin and today I'm gonna show you how to rewire the Jimmy Page wiring that was wired in the 60s wiring to a 50s wiring. Those who know me a little bit more know that my favorite guitar is a red ES-335 Studio that I've wired with the Jimmy Page wiring. That wiring as I wired it was a 60 style wiring and recently I purchased another Studio ES-335 that came with a 50s wiring installed. And I've noticed that I love that 50s wiring so much more that I would want to have the Jimmy Page wired, my number one guitar, also to have the 50s wiring. And this is actually quite easy to do. The difference between the 50s and the 60s style wiring is where the toggle switch wires and the hot wires of the pickups are connected. With the Jimmy Page wiring, the hot of the bridge pickup goes first into the tone control of the neck pickup, which is the series parallel. From there on, it's usually wired to the bridge tone control on that pin that is directly connected to the volume control. So in my case, I will have to add a separate wire around everything so I can solder it on the other pin because now it has to be on the volume control. One thing that also might be confusing for a few of you is that the capacitor is in another position. In this case, it does not really matter. It's, the wiring itself is the same. They are in series, the capacitor and the pot. The current flows through it just the same way it does uh, if they're in the other direction. So mostly you use the capacitor as a connector to the volume pot because yeah, you save on a wire for that one. In this case, I don't. It's easier for me that way. It's easier to insert that harness in that way that I have a flexible wire between the pots and yeah, the capacitor just goes on the same pot to ground. And like this, it's a little bit more easy to solder, to handle, especially with the semi-hollow. Getting a wiring harness in and out of a semi-hollow is often considered a pain in the <clears throat> But honestly, I don't really think it is, but many people do. And yeah, Pew Pew Devices on Instagram reached out to us and said he has developed some new tools to make it easier even. And yeah, I'm gonna try them today. He was kind enough to provide them to us because he said, our videos encouraged him to work himself on his guitars, which I think is the greatest compliment he could give us. And yeah, thank you so much. And I'm gonna have a look if this makes it even easier than my garden wire method. So as for preparation, I've got my guitar set up over here. I've got a printout of the changes of the wiring so I can have a look at it. So I'm not making any mistakes. I have the Pew Pew devices tools for the harness. Then obviously soldering iron and solder. I've made the sponge wet already. And yeah, some pliers and some wire. Also, I have a scalpel with me just to remove the insulation later on. Those over here are the ones for the pots. Just push them over it like this. You see they hold firmly. And what I like is that he also includes these holders so you have them together. So it can't slip through. Well, it can if you really try hard but shouldn't. So those over here have a double function. So one fits exactly the output jack over here so you can both of them actually do. And on the inside he has made it diameter so you can screw it onto the tug switch. Which is a little bit hard as I've tried this already. You 
can see that holds firmly. And that one in here. For the output check, can you see? That one also is easily stable enough for all of this. So then I think I'm not gonna use the tools for the removal. Okay, now I've got them all out, but you may notice those shims are missing. But then again, Pew Pew also thought of this because he made a magnet on one side. Tone controls at once with the caps. I have the temperature of my soldering iron at about 360 degrees Celsius, something like this. Of course, if we can pull this all the way through the shielding and everything, I eh, don't think so. Okay, we got rid of the first wire over here. We don't have to do anything on that bridge tone anymore because everything now is on the volume parts. Solder over here. On the hand I'm holding the part I wanna solder to wire usually so like this on the other hand on the other hand the soldering iron then just like this you always want to heat the part that you're applying solder on not put the soldering iron on the solder directly I'm gonna unsolder that wire first and solder it on the other. And that one is also done. So we only have that one over here left with the, this should be the neck, right? So I'm having here 
the wire that's coming that's the white one that's coming from the toggle switch that one has to go on the middle right yeah and that red one that's coming directly from the pickup that one has to go over to the other one so yeah first And we'll have to unsolder the ground from the shielding from the pickup because that one is dangerously close to dangerously close to short cutting something. Uh, definitely gonna add some shrink tube over that. Now I've got the hot wire soldered over there. So we didn't fry the push pull because that one can easily happen. Now I've got it. Push-pull still works, great. And that was it. We've converted it now to 50 star wiring. And now we have to reinsert everything. So what we're gonna do now, this one is still in there as it was previously. So I would not have needed to do anything with that one. For the toggle switch, I really don't see that much of a need for it, but yeah. Okay, and now I have to get in all of this again. So, let's see if this actually makes it really easier. Let's give it a mo little bit more wire. I think this, this will help. Twisted those over here. Get that one. Off. So. And I didn't lose anything. Not really something you can really mess up. Which is a good thing. It's a lot more cramped in there with these tools than it does with the garden wire method, so. To get the shims over there because they're half aligned. It looks like it's not that easy, so. 
I'm trying to use the magnet. Let's see. Yeah, like this. Yeah, that worked. That's pretty much it. Now only the output jack and the toggle switch, but those are usually really easy. I like those clips, so you can't really lose anything. I want the pickup wire to go behind toggle switch so I will have to unscrew that one I don't see much of a benefit using the tool with the toggle switch but with the others it works really fine especially with the output check I imagine it really helps All the wires are hidden again. Oh, the switch is the thing that I like. The wires also look in the right direction. Yep. Yeah. So this one should be in the right position. So altogether, redoing the wiring took me about one hour. This includes removing all the parts from the 335 from the semi-hollow, then resoldering everything and inserting all back together. All in total was done in one hour. I think this is not much time for all of this because as you've seen, I took my time with soldering. The uninstallation and installation was fairly quick. The only thing I would not do anymore is using the Pew Pew devices for uninstalling the parts because I think that's way faster if you're not bound to these thicker wires, let's call them wires. I would use the magnets obviously to get the shims out but other than that I would not use them to remove the harness, uh, maybe for the output check that one because as it was like this I could just loosen the output check have this one on the output check get the output check further in and I didn't have to remove anything of that one I could get the rest of the wiring out and could leave them one inside so that one was really yeah that was a nice thing to have and not to bother about it and yeah for the installation it's a lot more convenient than with the garden wire method. With the garden wire method you will have to always think about did I do that step right. Uh, you have to really take care to have that wire in the right place, put the shims on that thing so everything works out and like this you have seen it I've made a couple of yeah minor mistakes uh, on the way there because I did not pay attention this much like I would do with the garden wire method and it was really easy to just unplug it on one point then change whatever order I've messed up and get it back in there so and it was really easy to see as well so I like them for the installation even though it gets a little bit more cramped inside uh, of the semi-hollow and you have to be 
yeah, you have to look a little closer. Where do I push the pot and everything so it snaps in place uh, easily? Um, yeah, because they take up quite a, some space in it. But I think if you do it one or two times, it certainly helps. Also, yeah, if you do it just once, then you might take just like I did a few extra minutes instead of yeah maybe an extra hour that you need to really make sure oh I have prepared everything right with the garden wires placed it on the right spot so I can drop it in in the right order and then remove it again so yeah there's that um, I will certainly use them on my next few projects on semi hollows because I will also remove the wiring on my second 335 this one is my number one that I just modded because I want the Jimmy Page wiring in that one as well and yeah also on the one that I'm doing for my daughter then I also have to do a 175 kit with my son in the end of the year I will use that as well so thanks a lot John uh, those will be used quite regularly in this case and I like them. To the Jimmy Page wiring with the 50 style wiring I'm only using audio taper pots and what I've noticed now that I've changed the wiring the 50s wiring is way more sensitive on the taper than the 60s wiring. With the 60s wiring you really want to have a rather steep taper because otherwise you have really not much change until you reach about 5 and then you have a steep drop off um, if you're not having a really good taper on it. With the 50s wiring it's a little bit on the opposite side so what I have now is I'm turning now from 10 to 7, 6, something like this and I have a rather steep drop off there because with the audio taper you first have a drop off to about yeah it depends on the pot 10% of the value so in this case from 500k to 50k on 5 and then from the 50k to 0 on the last 5 of this so if this taper was, would not be this steep, I would have a nicer, smoother uh, transition over it. I think that maybe that guitar that has a better taper with it might have even linear pots in it with the 50 style wiring. And yeah, but for now I will live with it, see how I can get used to it. Uh, when I do the wiring on this with the Jimmy Page wiring, also 50 style of course I will see that I get linear taper pots for the volume pots and the audio taper for the tone pots and see what's the difference if you're interested in this video please leave a comment um, yeah with that one thanks for watching have a good time bye